We're now back on the Mr. Think Smart Show. I have the president of Harris State University, Dr. Walmack. I'm going to let him uh, give us a little brief of his journey, his life journey, and who he is now as president in this great city of St. Louis, which is my hometown. It's not his, but it's mine. And I am a graduate of Harris State University and a former employee, but it's a pleasure to be here to sit with the man and him tell his story. So Dr. Walmack, tell me a little bit about yourself and your journey. Uh, first, let's, let's go. Let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? From Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Born Michigan. Born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Detroit. Detroit. Hey, Detroit, stand up. Detroit, stand up. East side. What up, dog? <laughs> <laughs> See, I love him because he keeps it 100. Now, uh, now when you went out to school, because I, mean, I know you were an athlete. Right. So, mm -hmm. athletics kind of saved your life. That, that was my ticket. That was my ticket out, out of Detroit, out, out the hood in the east side of Detroit. Um, you know, I was fortunate to get a scholarship to go play uh, basketball down in uh, Mississippi. Yeah, Mississippi. So it was right. a great fortune going down there and play. And that was that was a transformation for me, man. I, in Detroit, I was involved in a lot of things that I shouldn't have been involved in. Right. And um, but that was that was sort of my ticket out that created a whole new life for me to do some things different. Mm -hmm. Now you hear, listen, you can make it. This man came from Detroit. He 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 went through the, the trenches, but he had a gift. And this gift made room for him, and it evolved over time. Now, when you went off to school, what got you into the educational field to actually take that journey? Like, what what geared you? Was it a mentor? Was it just you know it just kind of popped in? You got a dream? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what what got you there? I think it was a combination. I had I did have a mentor from Detroit that saw some things in me that I didn't see in myself. Right. right. So that pushed me in a way, um, spoke life into me about you know. I, that I was, I, I finished high school with a horrible GPA. So mm -hmm. I had a 1.6 high school GPA and a 14 ACT. So I had to go junior college first. Mm -hmm. And so I had to go JUCO, play JUCO, then was able to go play the Division II school. Mm -hmm. But even with that circumstances, the school that took a chance on me was a school like this, right? Mm -hmm. So because I didn't have the best grades and have the highest test score, they believed in me and mm -hmm. gave me a shot. Mm -hmm. So that's where, where I'm in my career. I will only go and serve at places that have that mission mm -hmm. and provide access and opportunities to first generation kids from low socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, so, so sort of in school, I didn't know education. I thought I wanted to go play pro ball. That was mm -hmm. my goal. And um, then go dream jobs, go back to my hood and be the athletic director of my high school. Mm -hmm. That was my goal, to go back, serve, coach sports at my high school and be athletic director. Mm -hmm. But people at my institution saw something different in me. Um, I credit a large percentage to my amazing fraternity, Capital South Fraternity, where, uh, yo to the news, uh, <laughs> that, that, that I, I didn't own a pair of dress shoes, I didn't own a pair of um, dress pants, and when the noobs took me in, um, and they showed me a whole, I had brothers, but I, my brothers were street brothers, right? Mm -hmm. So these brothers showed me a whole different light. Um, you know, I was a star athlete, but they propelled me into leadership throughout the institution. Right. So they said, hey, you're gonna be student government president. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. It's like, everybody know you, you go do it, right? right. And so um, the training for leadership that I got through the fraternity that really opened those doors for me um, from an undergrad perspective, became chapter Pomar as an undergrad um, president of NAACP, um, you name it, RA. And when I graduated, my president said, you have what it takes to be a college president. And I'm like, wow. college president, man, I'm trying right. to go back to the career. <laughs> right, right, and, right. Uh, no, he hired me in the office, man, and um, in his office at that point. And then I did multiple jobs within that arena. And here I am today, man, 20 years later. 20 left. years. And you know what? It's so funny you say that 20 years later, like I heard, I went to a conference, uh, Stay Ready Conference with uh, Eric Thomas. Yeah, from, and, from uh, Michigan as well. Exactly, he is. Mm -hmm. And E.T. said, he said, it takes 10 years to be 10 years old. It takes 15 to be 15 years old. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. Don't rush your process. Right. Exactly. He said, because your journey is going to build you into who you need to be, as well as it's going to help you. And you're going to learn so much on the way. Because if it's given to you easy, you'll take advantage of it. Right. Take advantage. Now, so you work, you, you, got into, you got into education, you you involved into that. So your, your, your line, so the schools that you worked at mm -hmm. through your journey, because you've you done a lot of traveling. Right, I am. And you, and you have a family. I have a family. Mm -hmm. So what, what schools did you actually work, work at before you actually entered St. Louis, becoming the president of Harris State University? So I'll, I'll back the journey a little further. I was, after finishing working in Mississippi at uh, Delta State University, then was recruited to go to North Carolina and worked at Western Carolina University, large okay. research institution. Was the founding director of the Multicultural Center um, at 25 years old. 
um, large research school, did that for four years and was recruited to take the job at Rhodes College, one of the top 10 liberal arts institutions in the country in Memphis, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and was there. Um, at that point, I finished my doctorate degree. Um, I was 28 as a young dean then, finished my doctorate, then was recruited to go to Bethune-Cookman, and start the Black College in Daytona Beach, Florida. Correct. I was hired as the, young vice, the youngest vice president there at that point. Um, I think it was 32 or 33 um, mm -hmm. there, so I went there and served in multiple capacities, vice president of student affairs, and got promoted to vice president for enrollment management, then became the executive vice president after my third year. So I was there for five years and served in that capacity over the years. Wow, that's, a, that's an amazing journey. Then from there to here. God bless me with the, um, I would say, my most rewarding opportunity to come serve at Harris State University. I'm now in my fifth year here, so time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, so graduated yeah. for amazing graduating classes and right. now um, preparing to have our first December commencement, you know, because mm -hmm. we're growing mm -hmm. at such an expeditious rate. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's been great, man. It's great. Now, now I've been gone for three years. Mm -hmm. so. And I've seen what you've done here, and I've always kept up with the school because I love my HBCU. Mm -hmm. You better believe it. Mm -hmm. But what's what's to come with Harris though? Like the growth and development over the, the last five years you've been here, uh, how has it grown? And I, I know you all have one of your biggest freshman classes coming in. I heard that, mm -hmm. and that's that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, and I love that. Um, so. What is your biggest accomplishments? Well, I ain't gonna say that because you you know we do that to tenure. I come back and interview you again. Right, right, exactly. But uh -huh. and since you've been here, uh, how the school has grown in the last five years? What have you What have you been a part of to move forward to say uh, I was I, I was the, the driving force for it to change? Well, I, first off, I stand on shoulders of a giant. You know that folks that came before me. Um, I'm, I'm blessed where other folks don't have the opportunity. My predecessor. Is here, Dr. Mm -hmm. Henry Gibbons, right. and he was here 32 years. And um, shout out to another new, um, right? And so, <laughs> yeah. uh, put work in at this institution. Came at one building, one degree program, mm -hmm. less than a million dollars from the state to run an entire university. And so, uh, we meet once a month, and right. I had the opportunity to um, uh, vet to him that I what I can't vent to other people. Right. I'm able to uh, get his guidance and his knowledge of political, state political um, landmines, you know, federal political landmines, but also too, just, just to have his wisdom, you know, and so that's there. So that, that's, that's been a blessing, right? So he did a great job of building a, um, we talk about this all the time, a uh, physical infrastructure, right? So I was able to come in with new buildings, relatively the residence halls and things like that. HBCUs, that's not normal. We have a lot of deferred maintenance challenges, mm -hmm. especially in residence halls. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to build the academic enterprise mm -hmm. and build it from a sort of a state, regional um, institution to, to, to national, international powerhouse. Mm -hmm. And I think we've, we've done that. I and mean, people across the country now know Harrisville State University. Mm -hmm. um, our outreach in 2013, we had 667 applications to students that came in that class. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we have roughly about 7,000 applications. So mm -hmm. over 800% increase in a five-year span of applications. We went from eight states represented two countries to this class, we have 34 states, uh, 34 states and 23 countries represented. So we, we've, it's become global, you know, global in the sense that we we are um, not able to take everybody that comes. So I have 7,000 applications. Wow. We only have space for 800, yeah. you know. And yeah. so, um, so with that, it's a it's a great problem. You were here, you worked here, you gave some amazing service to us, an outstanding alum. Our residence halls, we'd be, we'd, be, we'd be, no, that's the truth, right? We, we'd be beyond capacity in our residence hall. Yeah, so yeah. we've had to um, uh, go and rent out other facilities mm -hmm. because so we're beyond, mm -hmm. beyond the capacity. And so it's a it's a great problem to have. Um, that tells me that I need to go back to my board and say we need to invest in infrastructure because mm -hmm. we're growing at an expeditious rate. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting. A lot of exciting yeah. things are happening. And I'm proud of what you've done here and the team. And uh, like I met a few new team members okay. uh -huh. uh, across the board, and you know I'm excited. I'm excited of what, what the school's gonna look like in another five years, right. um, and and grow and whatever. Like I told them, like whatever I can do uh, as an alum, right. as an alum, whatever I can do, I'm I'm working with them. I'm working with a few people that said, Hey Joe, you know we, we need your help on the alumni, da 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 da. For home call, I'm like, gotcha. 
So, yeah, so did they talk to you about um, your name being nominated for this? They did. Okay. They did. Okay. They, okay. they mentioned me. I was okay. like, y'all gonna nominate me? Yeah. I said, like, I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. I, I, you're still I, following that threshold, right? You're not yeah. over 40, right? Yeah, I'm not over 40. Okay. Well, you, well you, are, you are... 40 under 40, huh? 40 under 40. <laughs> 40, 40 under 40. 40. I appreciate it. Y'all heard it first from <laughs> Dr. Moment. But right. thank I, you all I'm for... I'm supposed to tell that. But yeah. <laughs> okay. By the time it's premiering, okay. and they see it, I probably already had it. Well, okay. I might not have it. They okay. I'll probably put you out there a little bit earlier. Okay. Anyway, thank you all for watching. You are now at Harris South State University in St. Louis, Missouri. And this is the Mr. Think Smart Show, where you heard it first with me, Mr. Think Smart.